Hey everybody, happy new year and hopefully you've had a good 2023. So um, this is of course gonna be the wrap up video. I wanna talk about a few things. I wanna do the uh, cable winner announcement. Um, and also wanna talk about my favorite component I checked out in 2023. And also uh, take a look at some of my favorite albums that I heard during 2023. So anyway, let's get started. First off, let's take and talk about the uh, cable winner for the Vendenhall Clearwater speaker cable. So um, made the video, put an email address in there so people could uh, get in contact with me. You know, to be honest with you, there really isn't a good way to contact people on YouTube anymore unless there's something I'm unaware of. They used to have a contact um, thing on a creator page, like you would watch uh, creator, you know, their videos, and then you could go to their main channel page, and there would be like an email address where you can email them. They don't really do that anymore. Uh, so I had to do the email route and make a video and list an email, but out of the several hundred views that I got on that video, I only had three people uh, send me an email, so it's going to be one of the three. I've got the names right here kind of written down and crumbled up, and I'm going to put it in this bag. It's a uh, Arm & Hammer uh, laundry soap pod bag. Uh, it seemed the most uh, appropriate thing, or actually it seemed like the only thing that I had. But anyway, let's pop them in and we'll take a look. And we'll kind of mix it up, and we'll see what we got. All right, so I just really grabbed the first one. Nothing I don't know. And I'm, I'm excited. So we got Rob Cohen, and he talked, uh, he said his favorite album was The Beatles' Help, uh, which was, I believe, their album where they do, did the hand signs uh, on the front, if I remember correctly. Uh, but yeah, Mr. Cohen, um, I appreciate you commenting in, and thank you so much. And what I'll do is I'll email you directly um, to, the, to your email, and just uh, respond and send me your address and stuff, and I will ship you the speaker cables. So my favorite component of 2023, um, you know, honestly would have to be the um, NAD system I checked out, the little budget integrated amp system I checked out with the CD player and I had it paired with the missions, uh, the LX2 Mark IIs. And to be honest with you, I was truly surprised about that because I remember checking out that amp a long time ago when I had the budget audio vial, I reviewed it. And I remember liking it, and I remember telling people I liked it, and which was true. Um, but I, I don't know it, it. It, but I don't remember really loving it. You know what I mean? And then when I did it, re the reevaluation now. Um, you know, I don't know what what if it was the speakers, maybe it's the room, uh, maybe it was the source material. Who knows? Uh, but I really found truly that I really loved that amplifier. I love the dynamics. I love the kind of this slightly cooler sound that it had, especially when paired with the missions, um, you know, it really kind of elevated uh, the sonics. The speakers elevated the sonics of the amplifier very much so. And I mentioned in the review video talking about how one of the favorite things I found out about that um, amplifier was the phono stage. And honestly, I don't remember checking out the phono stage as thoroughly uh, the first time around a few years ago as I did this time around and I was very surprised about the phono stage of how capable it was and how just enjoyably pleasurable it was it really is a fantastic amp and I think for four hundred dollars it really gives you everything you need to get great pleasure from your music so yeah that is really my favorite uh, component I checked out was really the amplifier but it was also really more of the system it was the CD the NAD CD player I checked out as well as obviously the um, uh, the 316 BEE and obviously the speakers, kind of the whole system, the whole package. It was really fantastic. It was one of my favorite pieces I checked out this year. Also, um, you know, uh, as sort of a runner-up was really the SMSL uh, SU1, uh, the little budget DAC, and I recently reviewed that. It was just about a month ago. And, you know, I really got it on a whim and I honestly wasn't expecting much because I don't really put much faith into people's, other reviewers, other people's comments on something being, oh, this is fantastic. You know, I get that things can be fantastic, but so often I've been, let's say, kind of burned by somebody saying, oh yeah, this is the best thing ever. And then I get it and I'm like, eh, I don't really like it. 
So I kind of really temper my expectations on things very much so. Uh, but yeah, that was one of the few products I've gotten where I was really blown away. And I hate to be, you know, hyperbolic about it, hate to be kind of exaggerated about, about it. But yeah, I was very surprised because I wasn't expecting much. Uh, because my experience with Chinese DAX, with kind of these budget DAX, is that they sound thin sounding. They can sound good, they can have great clarity, um, you know, uh, but they, to me, they tend to have this essence of emphasizing the specifications as, a, as opposed to the sonic quality. And I get the impression with the SU-1 that it kind of threads the line very closely between the two metrics. If you think about sort of the subjective nature of something versus the objective. Yeah, this DAC measures great, it measures fantastic, but it also sounds fantastic. It really does. Um, and I really can't uh, think about that enough. But anyway, let's take and move on to my favorite albums I've heard for 2023. All right, so some of my favorite albums for 2023. And I've got, they're all kind of a theme because I think for this year I've noticed um, me kind of lending, leaning more into kind of jazz fusion vibe and kind of, you know, I don't know about a lot of people, but me as a listener, um, I tend to go through moods where like, um, you know, uh, for a few months I'm listening to sort of like, um, you know, the old country rock, you know, like the Allman Brothers or uh, Black Oak, Arkansas, or, you know, uh, that kind of stuff, or the Amazing Rhythm Aces, uh, that sort of music. And it kind of goes, and then I'll do that, be kind of in the listening to a lot of that different stuff for, you know, a couple months, three, four months maybe, and then it'll switch, and I'll find I'm listening to... Um, uh, <laughs> A lot of, um, you know, like uh, maybe reggae, you know, maybe like uh, this is Musical Youth, this is their second album. Uh, but, you know, it kind of comes and goes, you know what I mean? And um, I often think of music like food in the sense of, you know, you don't, with food, you know, you don't eat the same things all the time. You know what I mean? Yes, spaghetti's great, but it's not great all the time. It's nice to switch it up every now and again and have a hot dog or go have Chinese or, or you go eat some sushi or whatever. You know, and that's kind of my approach to music, and um, I find it allows me to sort of listen to things that I might not normally listen to, and it allows me to discover a lot of new music. And um, so, yeah, the albums I've got here are all newer albums. Uh, they certainly are. Most of them are kind of jazz fusion of a sort, but let's talk about them. So the first, and it's no in particular order, it's just kind of my favorite albums, is Black Classical Music by Yusuf Days. And forgive me if I'm mispronouncing his name. It's Days or Dayaz, uh, D-A-Y-E-S. So however you want to uh, say it. Uh, it's a fantastic album. It truly, really, truly is. Uh, it's a double album. Um, and uh, it's very much a jazz fusion, kind of in the realm of a kind of a hip-hop jazz. And in the sense of, you know, it's kind of more kind of hip-hop R&B rhythms, but done in a jazz style. And uh, it's a very lovely album. It's actually his first solo release ever done. He's played, from what I understand, uh, he's played on a lot of different other albums and groups, and he's been a part of other stuff and projects, but this is his first sort of solo release that's all really his material and that sort of thing. And it's just phenomenal. It really is. Uh, my favorite song on the whole album has to be on the first side of the first album is a, is a song called Rust. Uh, it really is great. It really has a great propulsive drive. Um, and he's a drummer, so a lot of the content, a lot of the sort of jazz rhythms are sort of rhythmically based in the sense that they're kind of drum based, uh, where the focus of the sort of sonic direction is kind of coming from, coming from the drums, coming from a sense of rhythm. Uh, rhythm. Okay, so yeah, uh, Black Classical Music by Yusuf Dayez or Days, however you want to say it. Uh, then, kind of an oddity album, which I actually found was recommended by Spotify. As a matter of fact, I listened to something else, and then this popped up. And this is a guy I had never heard of, uh, but it's a guy called Damon Locks. It's a new Future City Radio. And um, a very interesting album, um, kind of a concept album in a way. And the idea of the title kind of says what it is. Um, imagine 
the idea of a future radio station, a pirate radio station, and a kind of a dystopian 1984 kind of future. Uh, what would they play? What kind of music would they play? And, and what would the idea of that music be? And that's kind of what this is. Um, Damon Locks is sort of the uh, orchestrator of it in a lot of ways. And then you have uh, Rob Mazarak is kind of the instrument instrumentalist um, that kind of puts those ideas and those uh, directions together into a whole picture. Uh, but it's all Damon Locks overall and his kind of sonic uh, kind of ideals uh, kind of throughout. And it's a very interesting album. It's a very kind of uh, out there album. It really is very kind of avant-garde in a way and uh, it's been one of my favorite albums that I heard this year. And the uh, next one is an album that I knew about but I had never picked up and uh, also kind of like black classical music. It's kind of a jazz hip-hop album. Uh, this one is definitely more hip-hop-ish uh, than black classical music. Um, and I think a lot of that comes from Mad Lib. And this was a collaboration he did with Blue Note back in the early 2000s, where basically he took a lot of Blue Note's older records, and I'll tell you what they are. Um, Slim's Return, uh, Distant Land from Donald Byrd, Stormy, J.R. Cobb, um, Stepping Into Tomorrow, Montera, uh, Horace Silver, Song for My Father, Footprints, Wayne Shorter. He basically took a lot of these um, tracks, these older Blue Note tracks, and kind of modified them and kind of cut them and remixed them into a, um, into a new album. And I think it's done very, 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 very well. Uh, it's a very uh, lovely, lovely li listen. And like I said, it definitely kind of follows that sort of jazz fusion, that sort of hip-hop kind of jazz fusion sound. Uh, even more so than black classical music does, which has more traditional sort of jazz rhythms. Um, but yeah, it's a very beautiful album, um, especially if you kind of are looking or sort of want that kind of jazz fusion, sort of jazz hip hop sound. Yeah, it's a great album. Uh, it is a double album, so you get two discs. And I actually picked this up from a local record store. I had traded something in and got some store credit, and this was the only thing I really saw I liked, so uh, that I thought I would like, and I ended up loving it. It's a fantastic, beautiful album. Uh, check it out. And then lastly is an album I actually reviewed, uh, but that is Hiroshi Yoshimura's Green. Uh, this is a fantastic record. Uh, very ambient sounding. Think of music for airplanes, or airports, excuse me. Uh, this is his second album. I think his second album second or third, somewhere in there. Anyway, um, one of his first albums was uh, Music for Postcards, and I like the idea of this album and kind of the idea of sort of what it represents sonically. Uh, it's sort of a collage of ambient, you know, electronic, which um, very much portrayed in the names kind of what you imagine you're listening to. And sort of like, for example, Creek or Feet or street or TV or sleep or sheep. Uh, you know, kind of this idea of what I'm listening to, the sonics of, for example, Creek, uh, how that makes me think of actually imagining that that's what I would hear sitting in front of a Creek, for example. Um, and he does that very well, music for postcards, which I don't have the record of, but I have streamed it extensively, uh, kind of the same thing. You know, you kind of get this impression of, um, you know, like, okay, this title is about this place, for example. And you can imagine that the whole song is a sonic representation of that place. Uh, kind of like how um, uh, Kraftwerk did with Autobahn. And uh, if you listen to Autobahn, it, you almost can envision driving along the Autobahn, you know, that sort of thing kind of sonically represents what it is. Uh, but yeah, that is it. Uh, Mr. Cohen, expect my email. Please respond with your address. Nothing creepy. You're just going to get cables in the mail. Uh, I'm excited to kind of share with my viewers and that sort of thing. So I appreciate it. Uh, but anyway, peace out. And hopefully you guys have a great new year.